Hello there guys and welcome back to another episode of Time Travel. Now today, uh, we're going to be doing something similar to what we did in the last episode of Time Travel, which was also the last video on the channel. And we're going to be going back to around the same era of the Power Mac G4 Cube, which by the way, if you haven't seen that video, here is a link on screen. Um, I'll put a uh, YouTube cards feature as well as a link down below um, if you want to see that video. Um, essentially what we did is we went back in time, you know, took a look at the G4 Cube and, you know, what made it the uh, product that it was basically, like we always do on time travel. But today, uh, we're going to be kind of doing the same thing with the iBook G3. This machine, very uh, similarly to the Power Mac G4 Cube, um, was also a, a sort of a start to my uh, YouTube channel. Um, I believe this was actually the first... Um, Apple uh, product that I made a video on. I think it was also the first video that I spoke in. I'm not 100% sure of that. Um, but I made, yeah, this was the first video on an Apple product. I think on like any uh, like actual computer that I had, this was the first um, video that I made it on. And the reason why I think that it got, you know, pretty popular and because, you know, I, I hadn't really had many videos and I got a, like a lot of comments on that one. Um, one of the reasons why is because I had the original box to it, which I'll kind of show you here. Um, I, I do still have this. This is the original iBook box. Um, I bought this used from somebody on Craigslist, um, and he also had the box and everything, and I got it for a very good price, and I, it was a, again, not the best, probably, you know, I wouldn't really consider it my best work, and it re really isn't my best work. That really old video—it's a super old six, like six-year-old video, and it's kind of crappy. But that's why that I'm kind of going back and redoing all these videos because I just kind of want to give these products the uh, attention that they deserve, pretty much. And while this isn't going to be a full um, uh, unboxing video, this is going to be a full actual like look at the iBook itself. If you guys want to see another um, unboxing video, uh, just post a comment down below and I will um, probably do that um, if you guys want me to. Um, but uh, that's not for today. Um, so the iBook G3, this is the iBook G3 clamshell. I probably should have mentioned that before. And basically the main difference between this and the iBook G3 is that this came uh, earlier than the um, iBook G3. And the iBook G3, um, I, I can actually show you, there were two different iBook G3s. Um, and the second one that came after this looks pretty much like this. This is the iBook G4. It looks pretty, pretty similar to this, not much different. Uh, I think it may have like a different tone to it, but pretty much like this. Uh, Apple made that after they discontinued the iBook clamshell. So just to kind of clear up any of the um, you know confusion, because people tend to get these two models. While they do look totally different, people kind of tend to, to like get them, oh, this is the G3 clamshell and that's the G3. I think they call it the G3 Snow. But um, this is one of the coolest designed Apple computers that I've ever seen. I think I said that before for the Power Mac G4 Cube video, but uh, this is also one of my uh, like one of my favorite designs and probably my favorite design of an Apple portable um, because of just how you know cool it is. I mean, the thing is is a really uh, you know unique design. Um, Apple spent a lot of time uh, like you know basically designing the whole thing and getting into this nice little package. So the slogan for this computer when it came out was iMac to go. And pretty much what that meant was Apple was essentially trying to take the power and the brand recognition of the iMac, which I happen to have one over there. Um, They're trying to take that and pack it into a uh, consumer portable. Now, if you're not familiar with where Apple was kind of at this point in time, pretty much failing mid to late 90s, they were pretty much a dying brand. And when they bought Next, which was uh, Steve Jobs' company, when he left Apple in the early 80s, the mid, I think early to mid 80s is when he left, um, he basically came back to Apple and he said that we're going to have four major products, a, a consumer desktop, consumer portable, a pro desktop, and a pro portable. And this essentially was their entry into that uh, consumer portable line. And so they wanted to obviously make it look like, like like something that you would want to use and something that looks similar to the iMac. So they kind of made it come in like all, like all the same colors. It originally came in tangerine and orange. Not tan tangerine and orange are the same color, Michael. 
um, tangerine and well, not the same color, but they're you know pretty similar. Um, tangerine and blueberry, I believe, were the original colors. This right here is the indigo variant. Um, this is similar to the iMac indigo, so I happen to have one of those as well, um, but I can't show it to you on camera because it's underneath the uh, shelf there. Um, so they were kind of trying to have like the same, uh, like they called them flavors. Um, they're kind of trying to have the same flavors um, of the iBook that they did with the iMac. Um, and the original um, iBook models came out in 1999, and they were discontinued in 2001, and they were obviously um, replaced with the iBook G3 Snow, which is what I was talking about when I showed you the iBook G4. Um, so yeah, they didn't, they didn't really last that long. So, like I said, this is the second model um, of the iBook. There were, like I said, two models, the original Tangerine and, not orange, but Tangerine and Blueberry. And um, this, they, they actually had some more colors. I believe the Lime Green is uh, one of the more uh, rarer ones. And this sold for originally, this model right here, um, I believe this is the 366 megahertz. So this sold for 1,499 US dollars. You know, let's just start taking a look at the actual uh, like design of the product. I know that I kind of tend to ramble on in the beginning here, so sorry about that. Um, but let's let, let's just get on with the actual product here. So, um, pretty much, you know, here it is. Um, I'm I'm sure you you've seen like the uh, front of it for what like 10 minutes now. Um, we're just gonna move over to the side, and on the side here. We have uh, your modem port, your Ethernet, USB, FireWire, which is the uh, unique thing about this model is that it had FireWire. Um, models before this one did not. So that's one of the things that, um, like, if you can't tell, uh, like, the actual colors apart, if you see this port, um, then you'll tell that it is uh, one of the later models because they have uh, FireWire ports. And this is an audio uh, port of some kind, I believe. And on this side is your uh, tray loading. I believe that's a CD drive. Um, and this, this is your uh, power port. Now, one of the things that I really like about uh, th this like whole design is how they actually built a handle right into uh, the actual laptop. And that's this little thing right here. Um, you just kind of pull it out like that, and it's a handle. And you can actually take it, you know, hold it like this on, its, on a handle. And it's, you know, uh, you know very sturdy. Um, I I'm sure that this thing can break, but this thing's what... 15, 16 years old and hasn't hasn't broken yet. So, and and this thing has been. I I think this was used by a college student before I got it. So it was probably uh, like heavily used. Um, so yeah, that's one of the nice uh, like uh, nicest designs about this. I think, and they they never did this with any of their later laptops. And I really don't know why they chose the iBook G3 Snow design after this because. You know, in my opinion, like compared to this, it doesn't look as nice. Here on the bottom, um, a you know pretty simple layout. We have the Apple logo as well as the battery. Um, the battery in this thing used to work, however, now it doesn't hold a charge anymore. So I need to get a new battery for it, but I haven't gotten around to doing that yet. Um, so let's just open this thing up here, and I will show you what is inside. Um, you can see that it has that that nice hinge system where you don't have to like you know like press a button here and then hold it. It's just, you can take one hand and do it like that. You know, pretty simple. One of the things about Apple laptops, which, yeah, again, they, they switched to a hinge system. Look right up there, it's got a hinge. So I don't know why that they t took that off. But maybe to make the laptop cheaper, G3 Snow was significantly cheaper, at least for the base model. It was cheaper than the uh, clamshell base model, like $200, $300 cheaper. That's probably why that they made those cuts. Um, but yeah, you know, just kind of looking at that, like you would probably think the G3 Snow came before the clamshell. I know that I'm rambling again, sorry about that. But so here is um, the inside uh, of the G3. It's a, uh, you know, pretty nice, uh, like display piece here. I, I would say it looks pretty nice. Um, we have um, your, you know, nice little screen there. We have your keyboard, your trackpad, and your one button because Max at this time only had one button. Oh, you can't let me move the camera down. Um, yeah, we have uh, your trackpad and your one button because Max at the time, or at, at this time at least, only had one button mice. Um, they originally, they or they eventually changed that into a two button mouse. Um, that that was until later on. I think after the eMac is when they, they changed that. Uh, one of the nice things about this keyboard is you, the, you can actually get access to some of the ports by pulling these two tabs here. 
you, you can actually pull out the entire keyboard here and you can get access to some of the laptop's internals and this is how you actually install an airport card as I have done right there and this also makes it uh, for uh, easy repair by you know a like if you were to uh, take this to a store and your hard drive need to be changed out or your CD drive need to be changed out it's all right here so you know, easy access to it something that Apple as we know does not do today so this was a time where they were actually concerned about that which is nice um, and yeah, this I, I, I believe this keyboard mechanism was on later models. It was a little harder to get off though. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the charger for this thing. I have to reach into the box here because I don't have it on my person. Um, I don't know why I said that. Another cool thing actually, here is what uh, the um, iBook charger looks like. It has uh, gotten the nickname of the Yo-Yo Charger, and I'm sure you can figure out why. Because it looks like a Yo-Yo. Um, one of the nicest charger designs, too. Common thing with the iBook G3 is nice design. Um, yeah, this was this was one of their nice designs. This is a 45 watt power adapter. Um, obviously, you have to have your you know ugly looking standard cord here that plugs into it. So that's not as nice. Let me show you the end here. Obviously, power. Um, so yeah, you know that that's not as nice. But the Yo-Yo is a, a design that I really wish Apple would still have today, or something similar to it. Uh, they have like MagSafe, except for the MacBook, uh, or the the new MacBook that has USB-C. Um, but yeah, this is just something that's, um, they, I, I guess it didn't go very well, or people didn't really like it, but I, I really like this um, like design, because you, know, you don't have to have the whole cord out. You can have, if like this is all you need, to charge it, that's all you need. You don't have to take the whole thing out like you do on a normal charger. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna plug this thing in and we will boot it up and I'll show you some of the software. All right, so we are back and as you can see, I have the cord plugged in right here on the side. So we're going to be um, booting this device up. I'm probably not gonna be uh, showcasing the software that much like I did in the last video. I didn't really wanna spend that much time on the software because um, it's not really like a software video. And I can, you know, sometimes tend to, like, show off features of, like, the software, which really the software was not, like, uh, anything unique to this device. It was obviously just OS X. So, I'm just going to boot this up here. And hear it boot up. Um, I'm, I'm actually turn off the lights because you can see the, see the uh, screen better. So, yeah, here it is. This is running um, OS 10.3 Panther. I believe. Actually, I, I believe this is the one that I have dual booted with 10.3 and OS 9. So I think, I think it's loading OS 9 right now. Yeah, it is loading OS 9. So this one I, I kept dual booted because um, there's a bunch of stuff. I, I, I think there's some like uh, other programs on here. But this initially shipped with OS 9. So yeah, here we are in OS 9. You see we have a bunch of you know programs and whatnot. Um, oh yeah, this was me trying to, I uh, installed the Mini V Mac on here, which is a uh, classic Mac emulator. And of course we have like the, the time is set to 1973 because the uh, clock battery is wrong. So yeah, this is, th this was me trying to install like a vintage Mac uh, emulator on here, which I think at the time Mini V Mac could only work on Macs or like OS 9 or something. I, I really don't know why it's on here. Um, but we have uh, Internet Explorer, Mail, um, everything, iMovie alias, so this guy. I, I don't think I changed much uh, to this configuration, um, but here we are. This is macOS 9.1. I'll zoom in on that so you can see a little better. Um, this is we have 320 megabytes of built-in memory, and I'm trying to see the, the clock speed of the CPU. I guess it doesn't show it. In OS 9, we may have to boot into OS 10 for that. iBooks of this age could run up to 10.4 Panther, um, but I, I did not, or 10.4 Tiger, sorry. Um, they run up to 10.4 Tiger, but I did not have a Tiger disc when I had this, so I just installed um, Panther because I had Panther CDs. Um, so, you know, here we, here we are, you know, pretty basic OS 10. Um, we'll just go, I, I did want to see what what model this is. Okay, this is the 366, so this is the less expensive one that costs like $1,200 or $1,300.
But there you go, 366 megahertz PowerPC G3, uh, 320 megs of RAM. So yeah, um, and like I was saying before, it has built-in wireless because of the built-in airport card. So um, yeah, so that is, I, I guess that is going to wrap it up for the iBook G3. Again, I'm going to be planning on making videos on all the older, uh, older computers that I have and older machines. Um, I just haven't gotten around to it yet, and I've had them for a while, which I guess I've just, like I said, gotten lazy or something along the way. Um, I have made videos on some of them. If you go through the, this uh, time travel playlist, um, which should be to the bottom right of the player, um, if you're watching this uh, through the actual playlist, um, you'll see all the other videos that I've made on older, uh, you know, computers. And this series isn't really just, a, you know, particular to hardware; it can be software and like uh, older uh, like you know uh, devices like the first video I did was on the Game Boy so if you're um, interested in seeing those types of videos definitely be sure to like and subscribe like I said I'll be doing more of these in the future and um, as always guys thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video <laughs>